Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. At number 15, we have the Hulk number 17. This is a magazine from 1979. Yeah, this is a great cover. I, I, I'm hoping that a lot of these magazine format books from the, uh, from the 70s and 80s uh, start picking up steam and get a little bit more respect. This is the first appearance of a Randall Specter. Uh, also known as the Hatchet Man, also known as the Shadow Knight. For our number 14 book, we have Teen Titans number 20, cover B. Uh, this is the first appearance of Crush. Um, Crush was a super hot character when she first came out. It certainly faded away, but the heat started to build. Um, but the, really, the reason you really want to buy this book is because she's blowing a bubble. And uh, listen, stay tuned because that's something you're going to want to dig into a little bit deeper later. But uh, grab this book um it's going for cover or just above um goodbye for our number 13 book we have avengers arena number one this book has three first appearances uh first colin bloodstone first a death locket and first kid barton um if you're miss the boat on the young avengers number one this might be a play for you at number 12 we have marvel zombies number one the one in 15. All right, so this is a, a book I really like. Um, this is a uh, Elsa Bloodstone cover. And you're thinking to yourself, what? What are you talking about? Um, well, she that's her right there, smack dab in the middle, uh, but you really can't see her. The beautiful thing about this book um, is that she is on the back. This is the back cover, so if you get this thing graded, flip it around, because uh, that's frankly one of her best covers. Not her, her very best but definitely up there. So uh, when people are hunting for this book, they skip by it because they don't see her on there. It goes for 10 bucks. Uh, I'd be grabbing it up. I think Elsa's going to be a thing uh, for Marvel going forward. And uh, she doesn't have a ton of books early on. So early on in her, 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 in her appearances, this, this is an important one. At number 11, we have Uncanny X-Men number 212. Wolverine's going nuts. Um, anything around Wolverine is going nuts and this book in the contents has the first appearance or first battle of wolverine and Sabretooth. and most people know Sabretooth is aka victor creed and is supposed to be james howlett or logan's brother and um you know these books are right now are very low priced there's another one we're going to talk about later in the list i think this has some really good long-term value in the MCU would be making a mistake if they didn't cover Victor Creed and Logan's, you know, backstory and the 20 year plus fight they had in comics to go with it. And for the reason why you all came here, our top 10 books at number 10, we have Thor number five, the Campbell variant. This is another good pick. This is this book was actually published. Um, it was actually released, I think, November 2007, December 2007, published in 2008. Um, it's J. Scott Campbell cover. Uh, most people don't recognize that. At least I didn't when I first jumped on this. Um, in the guts, you have the first appearance of Loki as a female. Now, what he does is, uh, spoiler warning, um, he possesses Sif's body and then he shapeshifts into a woman. And it's actually a really good story and it's a really cool book. A lot of people were speculating and calling this first Lady Loki, but uh, no, this is more of uh, just Loki ship shifting into a female for the first time and it's in full. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dollar bin book. I think they're selling for what, 10, 15 bucks. If you can, you know, find them online or what have you, I find them in the wild all the time. Um, cover a is actually a really good cover too. And there's also a newsstand copy of cover a. So, um, keep an eye out. And I think this book can do well once we see, or if we see Loki shape shift or turn or possess a female, um, in his series season one, two, or any any of the movies long term our number nine book is x-men adventures number one the new stand edition this book kind of started getting on people's radar last year it got a little a little press it really hasn't moved very much though you can get high grade copies of this or the direct for 10 15 dollars uh this 
this is a pretty high percentage of newsstands just because it is a, a cartoon centric movie. So the, the gas stations and, and drug stores would have been ordering quite a few of these. Uh, and they're, they're definitely out there, but I, I make a lot of parallels uh, between this and TMNT adventures. Number one, uh, they're both uh, from original content. They're both versions of beloved uh, old 90s cartoons. Uh, they both got very little respect from the regular comic community for a long time. Uh, they both have minor first appearances in them. They both came out within four years of each other. Uh, so to compare them, TMNT Adventures, number one, has about 1,000 on the census right now. This book has about 130 uh, with 41 9.8s if you guess about half of those being newsstands or maybe less than that. Um, I think this is kind of slept on and hasn't popped off. The, the love for the 90s uh, X-Men Adventures cartoon is not gone anywhere. You look at this cover and you can hear the theme song. So uh, I, I think it's, it's a good one to stock up on at this price. And for our number eight book, we have Ultimate Comics, Spider-Man number two. I was looking at prices for the uh, for this book, like you were saying, Ultimate Comics, all new Spider-Man number two. This is your third appearance of Miles Morales, but also what's in the guts is the first appearance of Miles's best friend and confidant, and in the Miles' secret identity as Spider-Man, and that's Genki Lee from Earth one six one zero. Genki Lee is basically. Um, Miles is Ned Leeds, so to speak. He's actually a major character uh, in all of his storylines. Um, you know, he's 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 front and center in this clone saga right now, which, by the way, is a great storyline and so far. And, you know, when I was looking at, um, you know, secondary market prices and CGC labels, they didn't even reference this character to date. And with 105 to 110 full appearances throughout Miles Morales' history, I thought, you know, that needs to be changed. Um, you know, so it, with Genki being a major character to me, you know, just because as of right now, he doesn't have superpowers and is just a normie. I believe once Miles live action happens, this character should or will be casted in the MCU. But even if it's if he's not casted in the MCU or what have you still, he still has legs because he's with miles all the time, like Ned with Peter, so on and so forth, become the hobgoblin long story short. Um, I would definitely take a, take a look at this book. There's also a second and third print that my partner Ben is going to talk about right now. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I will say this. I've hunted these books for a long time and the third print in red is really, really tough to come by. Uh, there's a second print in white, a little bit easier. You may see that. Um, but if you come across the red third print, pick it up. I think it's a really, really smart play. When I was looking at the census on, for this this issue, um, 23.98 for um, the first print and 1.96. There was 4.98 for the second print um, and, and then 5.98 for the third print on the census respectively. So, you know, there is there's some upside here. And for a, a book that was ordered by retailers around the 52, 53,000 mark and not being graded as much, I, I really think there, there's something for investors to be had if they want returns long term, if they're, you know, speculating on Miles Morales. For our number seven book, we have Uncanny X-Men number 213. Um, I like this book also, like I was saying with 212. Um, this is, I believe, would be your first cover appearance of Sabretooth versus wolverine but also you have a, a dandy in the guts you have uh betsy braddock becomes psylocke and joins uh the uncanny x-men that's when she dons the name and also you have the first appearance of mr sinister in cameo and it's a, it's a decent cameo this book is full of spec value it's another low price book there's newsstand copies and there's mark jeweler variants along with canadian price variants um, I think this has long-term potential, just like with 212 and also Wolverine number 10, um, which is another epic Wolverine versus uh, Sabretooth cover. At number six, we have Siege Storming Asgard number one, the Greg Land variant. 
this uh, goes for five dollars raw, so it, it's a, a really cheap pick. Now I know we talked about the first Lady Loki, uh, I, I believe at number uh, ten, and uh, it's it's the one J. Scott Campbell cover where uh, you wish he drew L Lady Loki, right? Um, a couple years later, Greg Land did this open order variant. Uh, for this book, uh, which is basically, uh, you know, a note of caution. This is this this is a cover by. Um, the the contents are basically more, read more like a official handbook of the Marvel universe. But the reason I chose this is uh, it was rushed. It, it was reused. It's going to be reused. You're going to see it in stores. So what usually happens when uh, a Marvel show or movie comes out, they don't do the best job of reprinting the trade paperbacks that may be related to the series. And a lot of times you'll see the trade paperbacks shoot up in price because there's shortages and people want to read the stories. I believe this is the first time that they've rushed solicited. They just announced this to retailers, uh, not this Thursday, but the Thursday before, that they're going to have a new trade paperback out. It's going to be called Loki, uh, Mistress of Mischief. Um, and they decide, and they went with this cover uh, for that trade paperback. So it's going to get a lot of eyes as retailers showcase it in stores. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you have to imagine Marvel sort of going through covers going, where's a, a awesome Lady Loki cover? Um, and th this is the one that they chose. And I, I think it's a, it's a good choice. There were only 26 <laughs> a copies of the regular cover because it was an open order variant. We don't know how many of this, uh, Greg Land variant, um, are out there. But it's from 2009 or 2010 when variants had a lower level of interest from retailers and fans. So I think Marvel putting out this trade paperback uh, and using this cover is a clear indication we are going to see Lady Loki and they want to have people buying the trade paperback. So this is this is a nice cheap bet. Uh, might have a short shelf life, uh, but uh, but. You know, e even though, uh, you know, these characters tend to pop back up just like Loki has, there's nothing to say we won't see Lady, Lady Loki on in um, Love and Thunder or other future Marvel films. At our number five book, we have Star Wars The Old Republic, number one, Thread of Peace, the one in five addict variant. Yes, this was a, uh, this was the first series that was. Uh, playing off of Star Wars The Old Republic uh, video game, the MMO that was launched right about the same time. Actually, the writer for this comic was the main writer for that game, which, side note, great game if you've never played it. There are weeks and weeks of storylines for uh, all sorts of characters in the game. Uh, this comic was so these were the last few series or in the last group of series that dark horse uh when dark horse was controlling the ip sales were down the regular cover for this had a print run of just around 20k this was a one in five which that in itself is a little bit odd for dark horse they weren't doing a lot of ratio variants at the time but so that would put this at around uh around 4k uh I, these just haven't these video game series haven't really been on anyone's radar um prices actually have been spiking in the last six months for this and a lot of the books in this series just because i think there are a lot of firsts this is the first of darth barris darth angrel uh a jedi Sh satil shan who is very likely to be linked in with Revan at some point in the storyline. And there, there are 12 other first appearances in this, uh, in this book. So um, I think these are going to get more eyes as we go on. So if you run across the copies, aren't cheap right now um, and they're not easy to find. I think there's only about eight of them. I want to say on the census total. 
but if, if you stumble on this one, it might be a good one to, to grab and hold on to. At number four, we have Batman Vengeance of Bane, number one, The Third Prince. Okay, this is a super important book. Um, you know, Bane is, uh, is a major Batman villain. We've started to see some uh, more interest in the character as his daughter has emerged um, in Tinian's run. Um, you know, this is a third print from a point in time where people weren't caring about late printings. Uh, so this is really, really difficult to track down, particularly in high grade. Um, uh, so I think the upside in this book could be really, really sharp. Um, nobody's thinking about it. And... Um, uh, definitely something worth grabbing uh, if you see it out there on your hunting. Um, but uh, smart pick and uh, um, a, a book you should add if, if you ever come across it. And for our number three book, we have all new Ghost Rider number one. So, you know, there, there was heavy spec on this book back when, uh, you know, Gabriel Luna was tapped to reprise his character. Uh, on Hulu, and I guess, uh, you know, they had creative differences, and who knows what those uh, differences could have been. Some speculate that, you know, uh, they didn't want to delve into um, that direction. You know, um, Feige probably wanted to protect the character because I guess the the Hellstorm um, series didn't do all that well, so Maybe that was kind of the right call, you know, but, um, you know, with rumors of the new Doctor Strange uh, multiverse of madness, uh, this is back in play. And, uh, you know, I would say all ghost writers are back in play. But, you know, this one is, uh, you know, going for about 30 bucks raw. There's only about 160 of them graded in a nine eight. Um, you've got the first appearance of a brand new character, Robbie Reyes. Uh, and you've got the first appearance of that badass car, the, the Hell Charger. I think uh, when Felipe Smith was challenged to do something completely different, I think he nailed it. You know, he, he went away from the typical motorcycle. He put him in a car. He put him in East Los Angeles. Uh, it's uh, a little more grounded. And and just the trad more art just blows up right in the cover. For our number two book, we have Moon Knight 188, the second print, non-lenticular cover. This is a cover stolen from the original Moon Knight series. Um, this book is like blown out. It's sold out like at 40, 50 bucks. And right now we see on eBay it's averaging around like two hundred dollars asking price. Um the reason being is that there was a set leak that um, that the Sun King may actually have showed up, um, either him or Dracula. So uh, with this being an all-black cover, a common theme with uh, among this panel, um, it's super hard to get in high grade. Um, I've seen a couple in the wild. It's been tough, um, but... We can pretty much circle that the Sun King is going to be relevant within the Moon Knight universe. So um, if you see this in the wild, uh, you see this at auction, I would definitely uh, go at it before the market resets into the second tier. And for our number one book, we have Spider-Gwen, number 25, the second print. So the second appearance of Gwenum in Earth-65. And this is a Todd McFarlane cover um, that was done after by Kerry Randolph. Um, it was a really smart um, cover. Instead of saying Venom is back, it says Gwenom arrives. You got the light blue in the in the in the uh, the title that makes the cover really really pop. And it's also another cover that actually is a still of the lenticular cover. Um, what's kind of cool about this is that um, there is kind of a question whether like Gwen Stacy and Earth 65 can control um, the symbiote. And you kind of see this on this cover on the th uh, Amazing Spider-Man 316 homage. Um, you find out later on that um, Gwen Stacy can is protected um, 
from the symbiote from killing her and consuming her because of that radioactive uh, spider bite um, in her universe. ASM 316 going higher and higher in 9-8. I think this book follows. Both the number one and the number two book this week. Uh, the second prints of those lenticulars, if you happen to live near a Walmart that carries comics and they have some of those first two or three generations of, of three packs they were putting out, uh, they stuff them full of these second prints of the lenticulars. The last couple generations haven't had as many, but uh, that they might still be sitting on shelves. All right, great stuff this week. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and catch all of our great content.